Hey, what's not in the garage? The Jeep. The what? The Jeep. Yeah. Alright, like always, we are back in the garage. We're gonna go ahead and install some drive slugs. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you with the whole technical thing, but basically what happens is from the factory, um, the Dana 60s came with locking, most of them came with locking hubs, whether they be vacuum actuated or these, they come with hubs because when you're driving on the road, you don't want power to all four wheels all the time because it, it decreases your mile per gallon, adds tire wear, adds friction and rolling, um, rolling friction and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, that's too that's too deep for me. But basically, when the off-road world, you want all four tires spinning. Go and get, get in the vehicle, pull the transfer case into four wheel, um, either low or high, turn this from open to lock and bam, all of a sudden it's connecting the axle shaft to the hub and your tire is turning. Now, there's some belief that these things are really good fusible links. And they are. Um, these do come with their problems. This is a sliding, um, a sliding mechanism uh, because it's spring loaded and stuff like that. This is this they say people say could be weak. This is a weak point. This is a fusible link. So there's been times where I've been on the trail and my hub locks up, and when I say that, it won't lock the wheel like it's frozen and open i would have to take it off you know pop it loose put it back in and all of a sudden now i'm locked again but that's not something i want to deal with on the on the trail anymore and these do break because if you if we were to you know open this up this is um you know this these two pieces slide this here right here is thin metal this could all break but we're gonna replace it with this, which is a drive slug. If you feel that this probably weighs a couple pounds, two or three pounds, this is solid hardened steel. And what this will do is it locks the hub to the axle shaft full time. So the only time it doesn't drive the axle is when you have it in two wheel, two wheel drive, okay? So this essentially replaces this, this piece here. And whoop, there we go. And then the other piece, the other main component is this Durlin. I think it's Durlin, but some type of plastic spacer to hold the gears in place. And then this little cap. Okay, just like that. I'm not going to seat it fully because this is my my spare hub. But then you bolt it down. Get these cool little bolts. Boom, boom, boom. And now, you never have to get out of your rig. You always know your wheels are locked unless you break an axle shaft or something something along those lines. But like, now, you put it in four wheel low, you're good to go. So, we're gonna install these. What I need to do is pull out the old hubs first. I also need to grease these. So I'm gonna wash my hands, put on some gloves because this stuff is disgusting. I'll throw this in a little baggie and then we'll go ahead and install. All right, so I went ahead Greased up the drive slugs, we're good to go. I'm gonna put a jack under the tire, just give myself a little bit of room so the tire can free spin. That will really help when we go to set the drive slugs in. And um, I think it'll also help, uh, it, it'll also help with uh, getting the, uh, the locking hubs out. Oops, thank God that wasn't my finger. Let's go ahead, get this axle up in the air a little bit. All right, that should be enough. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. So what's cool about this is you can actually do it with the, okay, I get it. All right, All right. so what's cool about this is you can almost do this with, you can do this with the tire on. Uh, so, okay, 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 okay. All right, so we're gonna remove the old hub. Oh, great. Gonna come out in pieces. Now oh, we get some new ones.
right, so we're installing the East Coast gear kit. Now, what they have is a bolt, um, little threaded holes to help pull this out if, if, you, if you ever need to. So you wanna make sure that those are threaded out. And basically, that's all you wanna do. Rock the tire, just gently back and forth, get everything lined up, and now we're fully locked all the time. All right, so once we get the gear in, grab our cap, Line up the bolt holes to the best of our ability. Probably do need to give it just a little bit of a tap. by hand just be safe so let me paint a better picture now I got the hub out so this spring here goes between these two gear sets and it, what it does is when it you take the tension off it pushes the gear sets apart now that is done with this locking thing here. You push this, it pushes um, it pushes the spring down and it pushes these two pieces together. But let me kind of explode this a little bit and show you what really goes on. So you see this little gear, these this gear set here that's got this gap in between. What happens is, is when you're open, let me put it in here. When you're open, there's this gear set that this open spot rides, or I'm sorry, these teeth here ride in this open spot when it's open and unlocked. And what that does is it'll allow this to, sp I can't do it with one handed, but basically it'll allow this to spin without being locked, okay? When you turn this to the lock, what that does is it seats this down all the way. If you can imagine, yeah, so just like when it's unlocked, this is what's happening. Just like this, a little free spin. Then when you push pressure on it, it, it finds the teeth, meshes, bam, and locks in. And now the axle shaft is connected to the hub. But if you look, this is all that's that, that's driving power. And this is fine if you're probably four, four cylinder, or I'm sorry, four liter power. But as you get into the heavier power, bigger tires and things like that, that's when something like this becomes way more way more ideal because this like i said this is solid hardened steel that's that's got to be at least i don't know shoot three probably maybe half inch thick probably at least half inch thick that's about probably about an inch and a half wide versus this gear set here which this is maybe quarter inch, maybe, and all these teeth. Like this can break, this can shatter. So that's why I'm like, I'm really, I'm really leaning toward the drive slugs or the drive flange being the better alternative here. So with that being said, that's the whole install. It's locked now all the time. Uh, I also have it in park, which is why it's, it's doing that. But yeah, we're, uh, we're good to go. All right, so that's it for the install. Everything seems to be working just fine. Um, nice and locked. Uh, don't have to select the hub or anything, so we're good there. Uh, I, if you wanna stick around, I am gonna do a quick update on what's going on with FM, all the things I've done in my hiatus uh, from being on the channel. Um, Cause I, I'll be honest, the, the channel did take a back seat cause you know, life gets in the way. But if you wanna stick around, definitely appreciate it. Check to see what I've been doing on um, FM. And if anything, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. All right, welcome back. Uh, sorry it's been a while. It's kind of been busy working on the rig, life in general. So let's just dive right into it. So as you can see, got the rig outside the garage, which is a welcome change. I'm just going to cover some of the things I did real quick in the last few months that have been kind of absent off the channel. Um, just because, like, I'm in a world, 
I've never dealt with before. I've never done roll cages. I'm new at pipe bending. I don't know what I'm doing. So this is kind of me just feeling it out, making, you know, rookie mistakes. So let me just kind of go over what I've done. So obviously I got my door bars here. Um, those are done. The front is basically done. I don't know if I'm gonna do a tie in here. Uh, when I do my front end tube work, I might kind of finish that out. But for the most part, like I'm wheel ready as is. Um, the rear door bar, I had two options I was gonna run with. Originally I wanted to run with the bar um, pretty much from the B pillar to the C pillar and then start working on doing a back half. However, I'm not there yet. Um, maybe in the next year or two, it depends on how beat up I kill the body or how bad I kill the body. Um, but basically what I did, I just tied the B pillar into, um, you know, into the two by six as well as my uh, quarter panel armor. Um, did a couple different, you know, bends and radius bends here, axis bends to tie into um, quarter panel armor. So now I got like a nice slider that basically is kind of nice and smooth. And if I uh, get rub it on a tree or rock, not gonna get hung up. A couple, uh, still wondering on if or not, uh, if I'm gonna keep the hatch or not. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna keep the hatch or not. If I don't, I might do something where I have bars coming across and kind of build a custom rear end. That's down the line. That's like, I just don't wanna miss out on any trips because of it, but it's something I'm, I'm kind of considering. Like I said, I'm, do, I'm really considering doing a back half relatively soon, but I like kind of the, the way the rig looks now. I like the weight distribution. It works. So, you know what? Why mess with it too, too much? Also got a 1550 shafts out of a, I think that was an F450. Gotta throw those in too. I haven't done that yet. And battery relocation. This is done, not done. I still have to finish it. I accidentally nicked it with a, ow, damn it, that was sharp. I accidentally nicked it with a, um, <laughs> a grinder and I screwed up uh, the ground. So I'll just have to cut this shorter. I mean, it's long anyway, and then uh, finalize that. This right here is a golf cart basket that I'm going to um, put on a pivot so that way it folds up. I can still have the storage underneath and then we'll buckle down. So in case of a rollover or anything, it'll stay sturdy and hold everything in place. Um, what I like about this basket, should have done this on the other side, is that it's got these holes in it for drainage and stuff to fall through. But at the same time too, I'm gonna get some uh, angle iron um, and kind of build a fluid uh, holster right in there. So that way, if I do flip upside down, nothing falls out. Uh, before I used to have just a bucket, like right here, and uh, or on that side, and it just didn't look good, things like that. And I think right last, lastly, I have um, my C brackets are done. I uh, did like a 50 degree turn into the spreader bar that goes from B pillar to B pillar all the way up to the front here uh, and then I have this other bar that goes from sill to tunnel and it's also tied into the unibody um, I think now that I cut this other sill out I'm going to actually uh, come behind this with maybe a quarter inch uh, angle and kind of tie this into this two by six as well get a little bit more structural uh, integrity but I mean all in all I'm ready to send this thing this year waiting on a couple of trips to come up now that the weather is nice see I'm out t-shirt so excited that's really it i'm kind of bored already so i'll talk to you later